and along with the employees, you know, it also affects their families too. Have, have there been any stories out of y'all's departments of some of the employees having to like distance themselves from their families after being on a shift or anything like that? Or have y'all had to do that even? Of course, one that I have in isolation is chosen to do it at home in a separate bedroom, a separate part of the house. But we have had numerous employees off on quarantine. Uh, to my knowledge, they've all chosen to quarantine at home. We have had some hotels. Uh, I know that uh, Irving's had one or two, Farmer's Branch, that have stepped up and said, hey, if you need to quarantine, if you're not symptomatic, our doors are open to you. So uh, the community at large, I think, has tried to help us any way they can in that area as well. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to add to that just a little bit. Uh, we we found out from other departments like Dallas and some of the larger departments, when you put one of your employees in a hotel for 14 days just because they were exposed and they need to sort of self-isolate, the psychological effect on the family was much greater than the minimal risk to the family. So every one of our employees, we did have a couple of scares that were, were negative. Uh, again, chose to stay at home. You can take safe measures at home. Uh, we had a couple of hotels step up just like Irving, but what, what we found was, again, that 14 day away from the family was more traumatic than the actual 14 day at home. So I think there's some merit to that. Interesting. So those are all the questions I've written down. Um, I always like to end my interviews just by asking if you have any other closing thoughts about anything, whether it's the city's response, y'all's response to COVID or anything else about the topics that we've talked about that maybe you thought of, but didn't have a place to answer. <laughs> closing thoughts. I'll, I'll jump in real quick. Uh, I don't know if you guys just saw the governor's press conference, but it looks like we're going to start reopening the entire thing. And his order stated, which I thought was somewhat comical for those who live in Dallas County, my order supersedes all local orders. And you know where that was aimed. So it looks like by next week, we're going to slowly start reopening restaurants, bars, movie theaters to 25% capacity, which means our car wrecks and all of our other volume will probably start going up. So. Uh, should be interesting. I don't know what Irving, I'm sure you guys are shut down like us and most everybody's working from home, but it will be interesting to see what next week looks like. But again, hey, thank you for doing this as well. Yeah, I agree with Chief White. It should be interesting, but you know what? Our community is, they're hungry, they're ready to get back to work, they're getting stir crazy, and quite frankly, some of them are getting almost hostile. And, yep. uh, I don't know that the economy or the cities can hold up much longer with the orders that are coming out at the Dallas County level. I'm glad to see some of this stuff opening up. You know, this is the first pandemic that's ever isolated healthy people. And I hope that it's working out for the best, but um, I'll be interested to see how it works out when they start opening up these places and people start getting close to each other. Hopefully they'll continue to wash their hands and keep their distance, but we'll see. You know, Luke, my, uh, my closing remarks would be, I'm, I'm really proud of the men and women of law enforcement, of the fire service, uh, of the medical profession. You know, we have experienced something that we've had no history of before. We have no way to look back at, at a roadmap or a blueprint to say, this, these are the things that we need to do to ensure the safety of our community and ensure the safety of our employees. You know, we, we've worked together. We've been on phone calls with uh, chiefs of police and fire chiefs and, you know, Chief Conley and I have met uh, almost on a weekly basis, if not more frequently than that, to just talk about how it is we need to respond. And, you know, what I've seen from my employees uh, is every day they're showing up to work and, and they're willing to, to go out there and, and risk their lives 
not something against that they've been trained for. You know, they're used to dealing with uh, disturbances and they're used to dealing with violence. This is an unseen enemy that they've really had no training uh, against and yet they still have shown up and they still have served uh, with honor and with professionalism. And I don't want that to go unnoticed uh, I also don't want it to go unnoticed that our community has really stepped up and and been good partners and done their best to follow these these orders and they're constantly changing, uh, but they've shown a lot of patience and, and a lot of resilience through this. And I just think it speaks to uh, the quality of, of people we have living here in North Texas and their and their willingness to to do what it takes to stay safe. Yeah, I guess my turn. I, I would just say, uh, well, a couple quick things. Number one, um, you know, our, our cops are used to running at bullets or uh, running into danger, but this is different in that they may be bringing that danger back to their families. And, um, you know, having that added component of putting your family at risk is uh, taking quite a toll on some of these cops and, and uh, the way that they've been doing their business. So, I, I like uh, Chief Spivey. I'm very proud of our team and, and all, everybody, uh, both police and fire, that are coming to work every day. The other thing I would like to add is uh, I appreciate uh, the public's adherence to the order. The police departments do not like to be uh, the enforcement arm of a stay-at-home order. We are looking for voluntary compliance. All the major police chiefs and, and frankly, every chief that I know is trying to get uh, the public to adhere to these orders voluntarily. We, we are not interested in going out and taking any enforcement action. We want to help get everyone where they want to go. So by and large, that's happening. I think not only does that help keep everybody safe, but it also helps keep the officers safe. So I, I, I'm appreciative of that. We, we, are, uh, we don't want to be seen as, you know, the, the strong arm of the government coming in and keeping people from exercising outside or whatever. So um, anyhow, very proud of, of our team and the work that they're doing in a, in a situation that is unlike anything uh, we've seen, certainly in my lifetime. Well, I appreciate you guys taking the time out of your days and I'm sure every, every day is just something new and crazy. So appreciate it. 